Hello. Well, today I'm here to talk about the tenth installment of the Friday the 13th franchise, which is Jason X. Um, now, uh, obviously due to um, the fact that uh, Freddy vs. Jason was taking quite a long time to get written, uh, like they couldn't find a script that they thought was fitting for both Freddy Krueger and Jason Voorhees to be in, uh, and they wanted another uh, Jason Voorhees film um, after uh, Jason Goes to Hell, uh, you know, they needed another movie, and so on the bonus features here, they're like, you know, they're just pitching ideas out there, and one was Jason Goes Into Space. And, uh, apparently that was seen as a good idea, and so they went with it, and, well, after a while, uh, you got Jason X. Um, now, again, there's no real alternative cover, but there is an alternative, uh, back. Let's see, there's KM14. And there's a... The alternative cover. Um, yeah. Evil gets an upgrade. This film has Uber Jason, um, as you can see right there. Uh, he, uh, there's like a little futuristic nano, like technology that can help heal and uh, uh, fix like limbs and stuff, like a broken. Like uh, the film takes uh, place in the like in the 2000s, 2010s, or whatever. Um, at the very beginning of the film. And, uh, yeah, Jason goes and kills people, and they're going to try and s do some sort of experiment to see how they are able to extract from his blood how he's able to stay alive and keep coming back. Like some sort of science experiment, but, you know. Some people are like, no, we just need, like, you know kill him, but, and that, like, he's too dangerous to be kept alive, and no, and, well, they have him chained up, and then he, uh, gets free and goes around, uh, killing people, and then he, uh, is lured into a, like, a chamber that's able to, like, just freeze things and just get stuck there for years, and, he takes somebody with him, and so they're both later in the future when, uh, like later on, there's like a, uh, like a group of people on a, on a tr like a field trip go to Earth. There's now another Earth. Like, there's like, Earth is now so polluted they had to leave and found a new planet. And basically everything is like the same, just on a different planet, so... Like, that's sort of their basis there, and, you know, they find Jason, take him, and the person he stabbed and also froze with him, and, uh, they take him aboard, and the woman, uh, thaws out and is fine, and then Jason eventually thaws and, uh, you know, goes around and does his thing once he wakes up, kills people. One of the first kills in the future uh, takes a woman, shoves her head into like this like liquid nitrogen or liquid like like a sink where do that and it's full of just freezes and it's really cool. And then he takes her head, sees what ha happened to her, and then he just slams. Slams her frozen face against the, I think the countertop and it just is smashed and that's one of the most uh, 
notable kills in this film. Um, yeah, this film is very goofy, um, to say the least. But then again, it's in space. Um, a lot of people say, oh, once a horror franchise goes out into space, y you know, that's when it's pretty much dead. Uh, like they have no more ideas except, well, we'll go to space. You know, that's what happened to the Leprechaun franchise and uh, Hellraiser, too, if I uh, remember correctly. So, yeah. Um, I oddly enjoy this film with the due to the cheesiness of the film. Um, with it, like, within it. Um, it doesn't have some of the best acting, but, you know... Considering the direction they went with uh, for this film, it's not too surprising, I guess, that some of the performances aren't all that great. Um, again, Kane Hodder, uh, his final time as Jason in the films. Um, yeah, yeah, he does a very good job, and then he gets to later uh, Jason to is shot up, is injured, and then gets limbs blown off, and then these nanobites come and reform and help him, like, give him new, like, metallic, and seems to be even more strength than before, and now he's even stronger, and bullets can't kill him, so, yeah, he, he's uber Jason. Uh, as he's called in this film, uh, so you know he he definitely gets an upgrade. You know the tagline does not lie, um, and this is a cool little, uh, poster art and cover. Again, that's the same on the DVD, but you know it's the hockey mask, and then there's the new one and the red eye and the normal eye, and the, like the futuristic uh, machete. Um, this film was made in uh, 2000, um, but came out in uh, 2002. Like in 2001, they had a theatrical trailer, and apparently somewhere in some festival they played played in 2001, and also apparently it all leaked online, and people were pirating the film like a year before uh, the movie came out and you know this film had a huge budget uh, how much was the budget 11 to 14 million you know for these kind of films that's actually still quite big um, and apparently New Line soon I didn't know what to do with it Cause apparently when they uh, first did it, like, the people involved at New Line were fine with this concept, they were fine with the film going forward, but by the time they finished filming and were putting the film together and editing, things changed, the head of the studio changed, and they didn't like it, so, um, after a series of events, they finally released the movie, uh, but it didn't do very well, it only grossed, like, 17 million which is not very good. In fact, I, if I recall correctly, it's like the lowest grossing film. It's one of the most worst performing films in the series after Jason uh, takes Manhattan and Jason goes to hell. So, yeah, it just made a little more money than both of those two films, but, yeah, this, uh, Unfortunately, this, uh, you know, you know, you can say the concept alone is what sort of doomed the film from the start, you know, um, but this film, you know, with the cheesiness and the odd uh, and out there, um, concept, you know, I think of all the horror films that later go into space, that never went to space, because like, first off, they don't take place in our space, like, you know, it's not like Alien, 
where the first film is a straight up horror film. Or you could even make the argument maybe like Predator, because Predator is from a different other planet when it comes to Earth and Predators, you know, takes people from Earth and to their planet. Um, but, you know, it's not like franchises like that where the villain is from space or it, all these movies take place in outer space on some planet or anything. You know, Jason Voorhees, Camp Crystal Lake, all that is in, like, in the real world. Of course, you know, this franchise, but oh, they kind of went a bit out there, as this film uh, demonstrates. And I don't know, I, oddly enough, because of the cheese factor that's here, I kind of enjoy it. I know that a lot of people don't, uh, and I understand that. I get that. And I will say, you know, watching as a teenager these films for the first time, I'm like, I didn't really enjoy this film at all. Uh, but as time has gone on, you know, I have been able to enjoy the cheesiness. Um, I do think Kane Hodder does a great job in this film, and in all the films, though part nine, he didn't really get to do a whole lot. I sort of discussed why last time. But here, you know, he, you know, and this was his final time in, in the film, in the films that he got to be Jason Voorhees. Uh, um, you know, uh, perhaps had he known that, and I don't know if he would have done anything differently. Um, I know on this, on this particular set, he said, like, you know, he, he didn't want Jason to be, like, made fun of. That was, like, his concern, that Jason would be sort of, being in, a, in space, they, and being in a different direction than before, it could get very cheesy and not very taken seriously, and so... You know, that was a worry of his, and, you know, they did a great, good job, or at least, you know, I was going to say great, but it could be quite an overstatement. But they did a fairly good job of keeping Jason uh, fairly serious, uh, and as fierce as he has been before, especially with when Kane Hodder came about, you know, you know, he, he still performs... Jason as uh, intimidating as before. Kills are really good. Um, but yeah, like some of the humor from the characters, you know, um, I mentioned KM, you know, like the like android. It's like a human. Uh, android that's like a human and then Yeah, it's, it's, there aren't too many characters that are super well known in the sense that, you know, they're talked about. There's not like a Tommy Jarvis or an Alice or a Ginny or Reggie or some of the characters in the older films that people talk about today. You know, be they, we're only in one movie, um, or in multiple yeah, let me look at some of the other characters, you know. Ron LaFontaine. Uh, she's the primary protagonist who was uh, stabbed in the facility and uh, put him in cryogenic stasis. Two thousand eight, you know, failed attempts to kill him. You know, they just you know, wanted to put him in cryogenic stasis, um, and that was what she wanted to do. You know, they tried to kill him many times, obviously. Uh, but they're like, we're just going to experiment and see what happens. <laughs> yeah, well, that was their own problem. And um, David Cronenberg actually is in this film. Uh, 
he gets killed off in the very beginning of the film. And part of the reason is because, you know, they used his effects company, essentially for some of the stuff, uh, uh, for the graphic and the uh, you know, bloody violence that you see throughout the film. Uh, that happens, you know, is for like his company, the people who often do his movies. He's like, on the condition that he uh, gets to do a film, that's all fine with him. And so, their life's truer, and the part he gets is he get, he's killed. So, <laughs> yeah, it's it's interesting to see a very well known horror director. Uh, I know he has he's done other films that aren't horror related but you know he has done horror films and see a director like him in one of these movies and then gets killed is so it's just quite interesting I think um, yeah it's and watching the behind the scenes stuff you get the sense that you know people are having fun, and if it, at the very least that's a good thing, you know whether people like it or not. It's like, well, people seem like they're having a good time. They were kind of enjoying what they were doing. They're doing a Friday the Thirteenth type film. Um, Kane Hodder got to revisit one of his uh, his favorite uh, kills as Jason Voorhees in this film. Started the first time he was in this franchise, so and this is the last time he was in the in the films. He got to perform like the uh, sleeping bag kill. Um, again, um, but um, now I as as I mentioned months ago. Um, as well as others who have gotten this set from Shop Factory, the there were some problems with some of the discs. Um, Jason goes to hell for the unrated. There was like a scene which I didn't mention before because I kind of want to just get as to why I'm not too fond of <laughs> you know that film. Um, you know, there's a kill where Jason's possessing somebody and somebody goes to stop him or punch him or whatever, and then grabs his ear and goes. And then you see, you're supposed to see this uh, bone stick out and see some blood. Um, but it was like the R-rated version where you don't see that. You, you just hear it and then, yeah, that, that part wasn't in there. And so replacement discs were sent. And I got uh, my replacement disc and worked fine. Got my Friday the 13th Part 3 replacement disc. You know, that worked fine. Got my replacement disc for this because uh, the uh, uh, the scene that I just mentioned of uh, the sleeping bag kill uh, where he's <laughs> taking one camp counsel or counselor in the sleeping bag and beating the other one to death and the sleeping bag uh, you know there's you know, them saying, ow, ouch, ow, ah. That wasn't originally on the disc, and but with the replacement disc, that's all fine. And I would I would guess that now if you haven't gotten this set and then you do get it um, uh, now or sometime in the future, that should not be a problem. It should be fine, and they've probably corrected enough that they've, now the replacement discs are not replacements, they're just the main discs with this set. So, you know, I got mine, it's all fine for me, um, should be fine for you if you had problems with it and you've got your replacement discs. Um, but yeah, um, that's another thing with Shout Factory is, you know, they take great care of the quality of the of their discs, of the content on their discs, and so with problems like this that were addressed to them, 
they were able to get uh, replacement discs out for free. So, you know, all that you had to do was just send a proof of purchase, like from a receipt or something, and like digitally, and then send that with your uh, request. And then after a while, they would then send out the replacement discs. Um, also, the abundance of features on here is excellent. You know, they have all, of course, all the old uh, special features on the DVD, just as Jason Goes to Hell did. Uh, and new interviews with Sean Cunningham, Noel Cunningham, Kane Hodder, Christy Angus, um, writer Todd Farmer also, who is in the film. Yeah, there's just, you know, regardless of what you think of a film, you know, whether people enjoy it in a very cheesy, goofy way, like myself, or who enjoy it in a genuine way, because I think it's just genuinely fun in a non-cheesy way, or those who just aren't interested in this film, they don't really like it, or, you know, they might watch it if they do a marathon, but otherwise they wouldn't just watch it just because... They're in the mood, too. Um, if you get this version, the Shout Factory's uh, Scream Factory version, uh, the bonus features on this is actually excellent. It's really good. Um, I mean, that alone is worth the purchase, of not just uh, for this film, but just the set alone is great. You know, the quality of the, of the box set in itself is excellent. Um, yeah, I just, I just, yeah, I don't know, I, yeah, I don't know, I could just praise it all as much as I could, can, and, but I'd be here all day, since I'm supposed to be talking about mostly this movie, and, uh, yeah, I haven't really, I don't really know what else all to say, uh, said all I wanted. Crystal Lake Entertainment. That's funny. Uh, and there was also, um, I don't have any, but there were a series of books that came out of Jason X sort of continuing the story. Because they thought, you know, if we were able to have more, they were able to have more sequels to it, they would have like Jason X. Two X three and so forth. Um, the year this t the film takes place after two thousand eight is two thousand or twenty four fifty five. Um, and the reason they did that was so that Freddy versus Jason would not interfere, you know. You know with, you know it wouldn't interfere with like sort of the timeline they were sort of setting up from Jason goes to hell. You know. They'd have free reign and all of this stuff uh, would be possible. So, uh, yeah, after the difficulty of finally getting a release, wasn't a huge success. And uh, I remember seeing this in stores on VHS and DVD quite a bit. There was, like, a lot of copies. There were various copies that did... You know, as time went on, people bought them, and then, but there would always be more and more. Uh, like as people bought Jason X, you know, people then, you know, uh, you know, they would also, of course, to get more copies, and, and that was something that was interesting as a kid. You know, so this was a very this cover was is very, you know, I'm very familiar with this cover. Of um, in particular, this franchise, um, it's quite interesting uh, for me. Uh, just to think back when you know I was a kid and be in like, video stores or like, Target or whatever, and near the video section, there's Jason X DVD or VHS, and uh, 
which is very interesting to think about <laughs> here and there. Um, but anyway, um, yeah, overall, I enjoy this film. It's cheesy, it's goofy at times, but it's fun. And honestly, it seemed like they they knew that when making it, and they didn't try to hide it, so... I think that makes it at least a bit better, that they knew what they were doing. They didn't try to make any sort of, uh... Try to pretend it was anything other than what it was. Um, so... If anything, that I think helps enhance the enjoyment of the film. Um, at least on my end. You know, people may not like it, and that's fine. Um, but this film has grown on me in a very entertaining way. Um, so, it succeeded because, you know, films should entertain, and this does uh, for me. So, yeah. Uh, until next time, uh, I hope you all have a great day, have a great weekend, and a great week. See you later.